All right, what up, everybody? Um, I've been working on my neural network uh, particle swarm optimization project, and I finally got to a point where I got it working. I've had some people actually ask me what exactly is a neural network, and and some questions of what exactly is PSO. So I'm going to give a brief brief explanation of neural networks and particle swarm optimization. So for a neural network, you can take an input, and as you can see here, I got one input. You can actually have multiple inputs and not just one. It can range from all the way up to thousands if if you're trying to pass through images because images have thousands of pixels you'll do pixel by pixel and then you'll put in the inputs and then across the network you'll have multiple layers not just one layer a lot of a lot of times they use one layer but you can have uh, two three as many layers as you need to actually solve your solution and you're gonna run this input across these layers they're gonna have a weighted sum based off of an activation function and output a classification system so as you can see here, if I have a NOT gate that I'm trying to make, which is what I'm doing with my project for now, and I plan on doing some uh, more advanced stuff, I'll put in an input of 0, I'm going to expect an output of 1. If I put an input of 1, then I'm going to expect an output of 0. So as the, as the input goes through, it's going to propagate through this network, and it's going to reach this node. If, this, if, it, if it's the signal strong enough to activate this node, then it'll activate it and send it out across across both of these edges to the classification and then on this side it's going to activate as well and sum up the and sum up sum up the interconnections so the main point of a neural network is training to get your proper classification you would put in multiple training inputs and then say what 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 did you think it was the network would say i think it was class 0 and you tell them no class 1 you give it a uh, you basically train it through back propagation and say uh, these edges are incorrect and there's a lot of math and linear algebra that goes involved in into this thing but really what you're trying to do is set the the weight of these edges between negative one and one it's going to be uh, almost continuous trying to use float and double point uh, data types so between negative one to one is what you're setting your weights and they can cancel out as they're summing across so if you have a zero that comes across here on a NOT gate it's going to say 1. If you have a 1 that comes across here then it's going to say 0. So what exactly is back propagation? Back propagation is we're ch we're, first we're going to train these edges against the output and see which one gets closest to the output that we want. And then we're going to move on and go to the, the, the next layer behind such and train these layers keeping everything static. If you had multiple layers you're just going back this layer then this layer then this layer and you're just going to train each layer one at a time uh, until you get the proper output that you want and as you can see here I made a mistake whatever that should be class 0 class 1 move on so that's back propagation and typically in back propagation you're actually going to use a a training algorithm and they usually use uh, least gradient uh, gradient descent so gradient descent this is first we're going to uh, show you PSO and I'm going to I'm going to discuss a little bit about gradient descent using uh, this image for PSO so gradient descent let's say here at this at this point this is a local maxima and here is the actual high is higher than here so gradient descent what or gradient ascent it's actually ascending this time so gradient ascent would try to maximize our training where it's going to isolate itself onto one of these maximal points and it depends on how you randomize your inputs uh, depending of, of what your output is actually going to be so the flaw with gradient descent is that you can actually get into a local maxima and not the at the prime optimal position and particle swarm optimization is a method that's meant to overcome this issue so particle swarm optimization is an algorithm that was that was developed by Dr. Eberhardt and Dr. Kennedy in 1995. Initially, they were just attempting to uh, to model the flocking of crows and birds and how they actually they they can actually find food. And what they found was that the algorithm they created to mock flows, to mock the swarming behavior of 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 birds finding food. You may see that this bird over here has found food off in a distance, and eventually the the flock the nearby neighbors will say hey why is, why is Ralph leaving and they'll start following Ralph and as they all start seeing their neighbors leave and they'll begin to follow that bird towards that that general direction so particle swarm optimization basically emulates this this sort of behavior you populate a bunch of particles in the in the the in the particle space 
And as you move, these, these will be your independent variables. You, you'll move these through your particle space, and eventually they will converge on a, on a solution as long as your fitness function is well defined. So one, the reason why particle swarm optimization does not get trapped on a, local, on a local maxima is that particle swarm optimization pretends that each particle has an inertia or mass. So just because it, it, it gravitates towards this position doesn't mean it's going to stop there. It can go past it. And with, the, with proper settings, it will actually can bypass all these humps and eventually all these, all these particles will we'll gravitate towards a personal personal best solution and a global best solution. So I wanted to try to implement particle swarm optimiz optimization itself with the neural network and I spent some time during my spring break to get this all wrapped up and I was actually able to do so. So here we are with the output from my program and we're going to ignore all this stuff I was trying to get OpenCL to work. I haven't, I haven't done anything with it yet. So here we'll show that at the time of initialization on our, on our test sequence, we were able to actually get a value of 0.433 for our fitness. And right now, I'm trying to minimize for the least. So you can see it's a negative number. It's trying to head door, down south. And I did some something weird with my math where it actually comes out to 50%. Uh, 50% and that's, that's a flaw. It's actually supposed to be 100%. But we're at, in this situation, we're trying to optimize a solution so that we we are, are, are going to head towards the best fitness and over time this ran for about I want to say 30 seconds possibly I put in a, a I put in a set in a prematurely ended early if it, if it tests a bunch of particles and they all a, a bunch of solutions they all seem to work um, and then it runs over time gradually getting the best the, the global best value and then it will eventually get it this will run forever and then eventually hit 0.5 and we'll pop out the 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 neural the neural net settings and here I, in the PowerPoint I showed you that there were four internets so there's actually uh, eight on one side eight on the first inner four on the second inner and then two on the output and that was what I used to get the best uh, solution so coming across here we can look and we see the input here is zero and it's gonna be a not so we're gonna not zero and expect one our result is showing that when we put in zero that on the 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 zero node we're getting 6.7 e to the negative 5 and on the one we're getting 1 1.3 to the negative 4 so it's going to find a maxima this is tip, this is supposed to be between 0 to 1 but we're actually going to just take the maxima of these values uh, and we'll see here that it was correctly able to actually give us an expected the expected results. So we we put in zero and we get one. The neural network is able to figure out, hey, okay, so you wanted one. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a, a input of one. And for input of one on a not gate, we're expecting it to be zero. And coming across here at the results, we can see for the zeroth node, we're getting 3.8 to the negative two. And on the on for one we're getting 3.4 to the negative four so here we're showing that zero is the highest the highest output and that's that's trying to tell us oh I, the neural net says I guess this is what you want you wanted this value so here we can see that with the with these settings we're actually able to uh, train a neural net with particle swarm optimization and fairly quickly it's, it's a lot quicker than I expected for about 30 40 seconds of running and I can do some some checks with least grading to see how it actually compares later on um, and we're actually able to get a good uh, nice little neural net that will give us what we want so I want to try to move on to actually do uh, numerical identification and pop or actually before I get to that point I want to try to try some uh, and get I did the and gate want to try some not gates want to try or I'm saying this all backwards XOR gates. XOR is uh, one of the prime tests that people expect. And then I want to move on to visual where you take handwritten handwritten numbers and try to identify the number that is written there. And if it's able to work there and it's, it plays fairly well, then you know maybe I got something to publish. But we'll find out. So this is what I've been doing for my break and another reason why I'm stressed. But yeah, I was able to actually get my uh, my particle swarm neural network working. And I'm pretty excited about it.